at the beginning of the COVID outbreak, and we were able to share with the community the grant, uh, or at least the small loan program that we had to help small businesses to stay afloat during these tough times. So thank you again for allowing us to share McDonough and to share how to do business in McDonough. I want to thank, before we get started, Preston Dorsey, who is our new city administrator. So y'all love on him because he is getting out there this morning and taking a bold step in representing the totality of our city. So we appreciate you, sir, this morning. I also want to thank um, the, the venue on the square because we cannot do the work that we do without the services of our small businesses and those partnerships. I know you can tell from the video just how awesome the facility is and I'm looking forward to seeing them grow even bigger. So I'm the District 2 City Councilwoman for McDonough. I serve Jonesboro Road beginning at Kelly Road to Tarkley downtown. The district connects at Ivy Edwards and Highway 42 and terminates on, on Bridges Road. Uh, the district has a very unique shape uh, as does the city of McDonough because McDonough actually um, is, is built sort of on a, on a spokes type design. So I'm going to uh, quickly share just a little bit so that our viewers know what our uh, district looks like. And this is District 2, the light yellow. And as you can see, there are several neighborhoods that are involved and, and not all are featured here. I also wanted to highlight um, our commitment to small businesses. You know, everything is economic development. So you have to approach economic development in its totality. Uh, we are fortunate to have had a series of small business boot camps. Ariel doesn't know this yet, but I'm hoping to partner with she and Cap Builder, and hopefully we can do some more small business boot camps. Commissioner Bruce Holmes was very, very much a, a part of this and instrumental in helping us to share this throughout the county. So at the beginning of COVID, a lot of the initiatives were shut down, but in this virtual environment, I think we're all comfortable now. So I'm looking forward to that partnership. We also have Alexander Park, which I just wanna give a quick plug uh, on Alexander Park because I want everyone to get out and to walk. This is 100 plus acres. We have a beautiful, pristine walking trail and in this, environment where we're all social distancing. I don't want you to forget that that hidden treasure off of Jonesboro Road is also there as well. We have a community drive-through health fair, which is a partnership with Kaiser Permanente that's coming up on October 17th. You know, in order to have healthy businesses, both economically and physically, we need to take care of our physical sales. So this is a free, um, flu shots, as well as information on high blood pressure, diabetes, and, and other mo mobilities that affect us in our community. And then lastly, I just want to tell you about um, a little bit of fun that we've been having here in the city. Um, this past weekend, we had a Toys for Tots drop-off that was sponsored by the Henry County Disc Golf Association. We have a brand new disc golf course that would not be possible without partnership. And I will namely mention Mike Haney, who has been spearheading uh, all of this. We've just really been providing the location and I appreciate him so much. And this weekend we had an opportunity to share in uh, the Toys for Tots drive. You'll see uh, Mama Christmas there on the end. <laughs> But at the very uh, beginning of this weekend, we're going to starting uh, this Saturday, we're going to start our series of drive-in movie nights. We're expecting rain, but everybody's going to be in their car. It's an opportunity to kind of keep the kids contained and, and quiet. So we're hoping that everybody will come on out to see Spies in Disguise. I went to see this movie at our local theater 
and it was absolutely amazing. I love cartoons, so I'm really excited about having uh, this event here in, in the city. So again, we're, we're working on full quality of life and economic development. Our small businesses are, are very, very important to us. And so we want to make sure that we have the type of infrastructure in place that will encourage small businesses to come to McDonough. There are a few small businesses that have opened up in McDonough Place that will serve as somewhat of incubators for other businesses. I have a great interest in business incubation because all of us at one point in our lives will need mentorship as well as holding hands to help us to move forward. So I'm excited about the future. The future's bright. I'm happy about what we're doing now. But now that we've gotten on our feet and found our rhythm in this COVID environment, I'm looking forward to doing a lot more to help our small businesses. So again, Ariel, I thank you. Blessings to you and the organization. Shout out to your vice chair, uh, Chris Scott. So we are here to do business and I'm looking forward to what our city administrator is going to share with you. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I, I definitely want to talk with you about that incubation. So <laughs> Bravo. I'm ready. <laughs> Well, we will have um, our presentation by the new new city administrator, Mr. Preston Dorsey. He will cover the economic development, finance and business licensing, procurement, Main Street, and we will hold all questions until the end. Mr. Preston Dorsey. Good morning. Good morning, Ariel. Thank you very much for this opportunity to come and speak. Good morning, Council Member Vincent. Uh, thank you for those encouraging words. You always uh, bring great knowledge to our format. You, you're just so knowledgeable about things that are happening in the city of McDonough. Uh, my name is Preston Dorsey, and as Ms. Benson said, I'm newly appointed as the city administrator here for the city of McDonough. Uh, let me say that this was going to be a big production that we were going to put on. We had originally spoken, and, and I would be remiss not to talk about Mr. Hurd. Uh, our community development director, Rodney Hurd, was going to be part of our presentation today, but unfortunately he has passed. So we're, you've got the B team here with me. So Rodney is our A team. Uh, I, I'm the B team. So I will do the best I can to get through this presentation and bring you some great information about the city of McDonough. I also will be joined this morning by our finance director, Mike Clark. Uh, Mike has been with the city for about five and a half years. And then my trusted assistant, who I could not do without, uh, Euretha Lyles. Uh, she will be talking a little bit about our Main Street and some facade grants and programs on the square. They have graciously volunteered to bring this information and I appreciate their help in any shape, form or fashion. So uh, before I get started with my presentation, if you want to, Eureka, we can go ahead and switch to the share screen. Tell you just a little bit about myself uh, because I, I was excited to be asked to do this program for Southern Crescent Women in Business because uh, Ms. Vincent knows this, but Ms. Shaw, you, you know, I'm married to a lady who, who uh, owns two businesses here in the city of McDonough. Uh, she has been a 20-year business owner here in the city of McDonough of two daycares, and we are small businesses. So when I was asked to do this, I said, what, what greater opportunity to share some of my thoughts and uh, some of the things we do in our daycares here in the city of McDonough as, as to participate in this type of program. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what economic development is, uh, how do we uh, improve that? And what makes the city of McDonough what it is? Uh, as we know, economic development is the creation of wealth from which the community benefits are realized. It's more than just job a job program. It really talks about an investment in our growing community. It grows our economy, it, it enhances our city, and it gives quality of life for all of our citizens here. Uh, economic, e economic development means different things to different people, but on a broad scale, anything a community does to foster and create a healthy, a healthy uh, economic development. Today's economic development professionals are trying harder than ever to define their field in terms that are more creative and uh, to our policymakers, to our public and our other professionals. There are probably many definitions for economic development, but these are the practices and the things that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. Economic development is a concentrated effort on the part of the responsible 
uh, responsible of our governing body here in the city of McDonough. Uh, they want to influence our direction to private sector investments toward opportunities that can lead to sustained economic growth. So we talk about that. Can we move that forward? We talk about that. I want to talk about a few things here in the city of McDonough. As you know, we are uh, Henry County is a growing county. Uh, the city of McDonough, uh, Henry County is made up of four cities. We have the city of Stockbridge, which Michelle, I think you heard from on uh, one of your previous presentations. Uh, we have the city of Locust Grove, the city of Hampton, and the city of McDonough. Uh, here, we are about 260,000 people in, the, in Henry County. The city of McDonough is made up of about 27,000 residents. Um, we are very involved with our Chamber of Commerce here. Um, everything happens here at the city of McDonough. We are a self-sustained uh, city. We do all of our business license, our inspections, our community development, our Main Street program, um, anything that's building, we do, uh, we, we, we issue our own business license. So everything is done here in-house in the city of McDonough. We have our own police department and our own fire department. So the city of McDonough is a booming, booming city. Uh, we, we follow the Municode process with our, uh, with our ordinances. Uh, Mike Clark will talk about some of the purchase uh, programs we have here in the city of McDonald's. So, we talked a little bit about our Main Street program. This is a building that we purchased some years ago. Uh, it has since been repainted and re uh, uh, redone. So it looks a little different now, but uh, on our downtown square, we have our Main Street offices. This is, the, I talked about earlier, about our population for the city of McDonough. In 1980, we we're about 2,778 people. In the year 2000, we grew to about 8,368. 2010, we had, uh, that was our biggest growth. Uh, it kind of outgrew us. We, we really couldn't keep up with our infrastructure, so we had to hire more police, more firemen, and uh, more employees here at the city of McDonough, and definitely improve our infrastructure. 2018, we we're about 24,000. And in 2020, we are about 27,000 citizens here. Uh, 575 cities and towns in rural Georgia. McDonald ranks about 43rd in population. Our housing market is booming here in the city of McDonough. Uh, we had a, three or four different builders come to the city of McDonough council meeting. So our housing market is very fluid here. Uh, any type of house you want to buy in the city of McDonough, we have it here. So. We encourage small business to, uh, to come to the city of McDonough to meet with our mayor and council, to meet with our community development staff about doing subdivisions or apartments here in the city of McDonough. These are some of the current activities. Some of these have already been completed that we are working on in McDonough, Windsor Estates, and I think Ms. Benson uh, touched on a few of these, Iris Lake Village, North Valley, Hamilton Point, the Summit Hamilton Garden Walk, Clearwater Point, Brush Arbor, Charleston Walk, Cottages at Avalon, Park Place at Avalon, Kensington Park, Charleston Village, Thomas Estates, and Arnold Estates. That's just a few of the subdivisions and complexes that we are building here in the city of McDonough. So we are extremely busy here trying to keep folks employed. Uh, COVID-19 really kind of slowed everything down just a tad bit in McDonough, but we are slowly coming out from uh, our COVID-19 issues. And we see that we are, have builders lined up to come and um, produce a great product here in the city of McDonough. Uh, these may not be current, but these are some of the uh, unemployment rates we had in the city of McDonough. We know with COVID-19, those numbers are a tad bit higher, uh, but uh, before COVID-19, we're about 5.70% uh, unemployment here in the city of McDonough. Some of the infrastructures that we are working on to improve is our wastewater uh, plant here in the city of McDonough, our water plant. Um, we are currently talking about a solar farm here in the city of McDonough, Mayor and Council has approved uh, 47 solar lights to be installed uh, in our uh, different areas in the city of McDonough. We have also purchased some property and I hope Ms. Vincent will, will expand on that just a little bit. We definitely want to be a green city. So in the near future, we will be discussing a solar farm here in the city of McDonough. So, uh, just in, recently, we built a, a new courthouse, our municipal uh, McDonough Municipal Court uh, was completed about a $5 million project. It was uh, done on time and under budget. Uh, that's one of the nicest uh, facilities we have here in the city of McDonough. It is uh, right off our downtown corridor. So if you're ever in McDonough, please drive by and look at our new court facility and our police department. Uh, we've just completed this project. Uh, this is just the, the, the 
drawings of our new police precinct on Simpson Street. Uh, Miss Vincent was a, a proponent of this. She led the charge on this. Uh, we just completed this a few months ago. The precinct is open and operational and it fits in that neighborhood uh, greatly. So that is a big asset to the city of McDonald. Some of the other things uh, that we have here in the city of McDonald's are Big Springs and Hope Park addition. Uh, those have been a big, uh, a big hit with our citizens. As you know, as you see the bottom uh, picture, we have a walking trail there. We have some facilities where you can go out and sit and enjoy the pond and, and eat lunch or, or do a picnic out there. So those additions have been a big help to the city of McDonald's. We have our CL Polk uh, Interactive uh, Museum. It is currently closed because of COVID-19, but we hope in the next 30 to 45 days to have that reopened. But you can come down to visit our uh, museum. It kind of gives you a history of what's happening here in the city of McDonough and some of our, uh, some of our current events and our past events. As Ms. Vincent talked about, West Alexander Park edition. Um, this is a moving, um, we're continually adding things to this park. Uh, this park has probably been one of the nicest parks we have completed here in the city of McDonough. Uh, coming up in our October 19th council meeting, we're gonna be approving a bandstand that's gonna be built there in uh, West Alexander Park. So that's gonna give us a big deal for, for uh, movies and concerts and different events there. So we'll continue to grow that park uh, as the city continues to grow. Uh, our Avalon Park, park concept, that's just a little bit, uh, some of the other things we're gonna do at Avalon Park with some of our expansions there. Jonesboro Road Park concept, Miss, this is another uh, park that Miss Benson has championed. Uh, you'll see some of this coming to our future council meetings. We had a little delay because of COVID-19 and some entrance and exit uh, issues we had with DOT but those have been resolved. Uh, so we'll start the, the construction of this park here in the next uh, four to six months. In our downtown square, as you see, we have several events that happen on our downtown square uh, throughout the year. The biggest event that we do here in the city of McDonough is our Geranium Festival. Uh, it brings to anywhere from 20 to 25,000 to the city of McDonough on a Saturday. Uh, we do Christmas parades and other events, arts uh, festivals and things like that. So our downtown, uh, business area is very vibrant, uh, vibrant, and, and it just a lot of folks want to come and hang out. In the in recent years, uh, we have opened up a couple of new businesses downtown McDonough. We have a couple of new restaurants, an ice cream shop, and if you come to McDonough on Friday and Saturday night, you will see a lot of people wandering around City of McDonough, eating, sitting out, just enjoying the sights, watching the traffic, um, and having a great time downtown McDonough. Uh, what we hope to do in the future is do, uh, we want to be part of what we call a McDonough art walk. Uh, so this is something that we are working with. This is just a, a presentation that was presented to the mayor and council. And this is something that uh, we'll be leaving our Polk Museum and kind of walking down to our Hood, Hood Street, um, Hood Street uh, Art Museum. So this is just some of the things that the city of McDonough mayor and council are working on for the near future. And doing some of the improvements downtown McDonough, there are a lot that we're gonna do with these alleyways. Uh, I know recently this has been improved greatly. Uh, so they're gonna be talking about doing movies and football games and things in this alleyway. So I think they had their first event a couple of weeks ago. And this is what we want the, uh, the alleyways in the city of McDonough to look like. Once it's completed, as you see, we wanna have art painted on the building with flowers and trees and just improve these alleyways for people who wanna drive through or walk through, it just makes it, uh, it just improves that area uh, 100%. Some of the things we're doing here in the city of McDonough with Wi-Fi in our parks, our sidewalk connectivity through the city is a big push for our mayor and council. Uh, so we'll be meeting with the county. I uh, already had several meetings with them. So we'll be dealing with this in the near future. We wanna make sure that we can walk from one part of the city to the other, make sure there are sidewalks. Uh, all of our city buildings are connected with fiber. We have uh, tower-based mesh Wi-Fi backup. We've upgraded our servers and backup servers here at City Hall. Our fire department, our, uh, they have an ISO rating of two. Our, our police department is a state certified police department. One of the things that we talk about here in the city of McDonough is for the past five years, we have been one of the top 50 safest cities in the state of Georgia. So we, uh, we pride ourselves on that because when people start looking to come and do uh, development here in the city of McDonough or build a home or open a business, 
they want to make sure that they're moving into a safe city center. McDonough Heart, that's one of the things that, that our mayor and council preach about. We, we do everything here with a McDonough Heart. If there are any questions about that, uh, so those are just a few things that we have going on here in the city of McDonough. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Mike Clark, and Mike is going to talk about um, our purchasing, our procurement program, our purchasing, and some things that we do here in the city of McDonough. Thank you. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, you know, Councilwoman Vincent has four daughters. I have three. If I had, if I'd known you earlier, we could have gotten together and I probably would have raised my three better, but we could have consulted. Um, but it's an honor to be here with you and and with Councilman Vincent and as well as you, Ariel, and and the members of the of the organization. I wanted to talk just a minute about business licenses, and that's the last time you're going to hear me say the word business license. Um, it's really an occupational tax certificate here in McDonough, and, and of course that's not unique to any county or city, um, and we're no different. We, we require a occupational tax permit slash certificate uh, to do business in McDonough. If you're new to McDonough, you would fill out an application and uh, estimate what your gross receipts would be for the remainder of the year. So if you, if you came to, to McDonough in June, we would ask you to estimate your revenues through December, and then your tax, your occupational tax would be based on those revenues. Some cities um, give you a choice between revenues and the number of employees, but our ordinance is just revenues, unless um, you are an attorney or um, a licensed professional, then you do have the choice of employees. Um, the biggest change for most businesses in the state of Georgia is that you have to have um, an E-Verify number, sometimes called a Federal Work Authorization User ID number. We'll just say E-Verify number. And that is issued uh, by the Department of Homeland, Homeland Security. Um, all businesses to get an occupational tax license, um, occupational tax certificate, um, must have that E-Verify number in Georgia, and it is required by the State Department of Audits. Um, and so every year, the city and the county and probably every city in the state uh, files a report with the Department, State Department of Audits for occupational taxes, for new vendors, and also all employees have to be E-verified. So all three of those departments would, would be filing a report with the State Department of Audits uh, by December 31. So we have uh, many of our vendors and uh, new businesses have no idea what that is. And so we, we just, it's real easy to get and they just, you just go to the um, Homeland Security everify.org and, and it works you through it and you can get the number in just a few minutes. So it, uh, it turns out not to be a real big problem. Um, but our, um, once you go through all that, um, then you don't have to do it every year. We already have it on file and we don't have to um, ask you for that number when you renew your, your license application. When you, um, when you renew your occupational tax permit in McDonough, we will ask you for um, the results of your year. If, if it was less than a year than those six months, for example, um, if it was a whole year, we'll ask you for your gross receipts for, a, for the last 12 months. It doesn't have to be the calendar year. It can be through October 31. And we will then renew your business occupational tax permit based on the actual receipts that you had for the previous year. And um, so the process, um, now this whole process was under our community development department and we just moved it this year to the finance department. And, and all we're trying to do in finance is try to make it more efficient 
um, in, a, in a speedier process. So we're trying to get these occupational tax certificates out within three to five days. Um, it takes a little longer for a new business because there's other matters, not only E-Verify, but we have to make sure your, your business is located in the proper zoning area. So, so community development has to get involved uh, looking at your location. Um, if there's a building, um, the, the fire marshal will make sure that it's in compliance with uh, those regulations. And so there's a series of sign-offs um, to get through the process, but we're trying to get it expedited. Um, in McDonough, if you're a, a, a vet, a veteran, and you are disabled, then we will waive your occupational tax fee altogether. And those are, those are all due by the end of the, the applications are due by the renewals by the end of the year. And, and then we, we calculate the tax and we send you a bill and it needs to be paid by January 15th to avoid any late payment penalty. And just like everything else, we also, if you sell beer or wine um, or spirits, I guess you would say, then there is a separate application for those things. Uh, the very first time that you apply for a, um, an alcohol license, we'll call it, um, you have to uh, undergo a background check um, by both the state as well as the city. Uh, the police department handles that. Um, and then the application is pretty perfunctory, Sandra, um, after that. So, and again, you don't have to go through that background check every year. Um, the question comes up sometimes, I'm going to go fast, um, I'm not going to talk about everything on this list, but uh, many businesses are incorporated, there are LLCs, uh, et cetera, but they go by a, a doing business as, or what we call a DBA, and that has to be um, assigned to you officially through the Henry County Superior Court here in McDonough, uh, in any, I guess, any Henry County business, um, and it's just, they just make sure that there's not another business out there using that DBA. So it has to be unique. Um, it's kind of like a, an email address. If somebody already has it, they're just trying to protect you and the other, the other person. Um, many businesses do not have a federal ID number, um, but if you need one, you just go to irs.gov and it's, again, you can have your number within, within minutes. Um, those that don't have a federal ID number will just use their social security number. And um, a little new to the city is we will take uh, credit cards for payments, um, again, to try to speed up the process. In the past, we would not, but we will take credit cards here at the city of McDonough for payment of your occupational tax and as well as um, alcohol licenses. Um, okay, I'm going to skip down to the more important thing, I think, at this point. And I mean, there's nothing more important than businesses, but we we'll talk about procurement. Um, at, this, at the city of McDonough, and just let me know if, if we're running short on time. Okay. I think we have enough time. Um, the procurement side of the city of McDonough, uh, we do not have a centralized purchasing department. So uh, we are therefore decentralized, meaning that each department within the city uh, is responsible for their own purchases. But we do have some generally accepted guidelines that we go by uh, and everybody seems to be on board with it. And we're trying to, uh, I guess, pound it in as well as um, future plans to have a more centralized purchasing uh, procurement system. So let me tell you, let me just start with the basics and then we'll go, um, we'll just go a little deeper. Um, when you become a vendor in the city of McDonough, we are going to require a, a form W-9 from the IRS Form W-9, which shows your business name, your DBA, 
and as well as um, your federal ID number. If you are, if you have a, if you're, if you're, so, if you're using your social security number and you are providing services to the city, you are going to get a 1099 from the city. Sometimes we send 1099s to corporations, but generally those are not required. Now, once we have your W-9, we're gonna ask you for, guess what? Your E-Verify number. And now that is, we'll ask you for that, but many vendors will, will shake their head and say, what in the world is that? And then we, we might go a little deeper and say, well, let's make sure you need to, to do that. So as a vendor, if you have more than one employee and the agreed upon amount of your contract or, or our agreement with you is, exceeds $2,499, you have to have a E-Verify number. And you also have to send us an affidavit of United States citizenship or that you have, that you are registered in the United States. Um, so if you only have one employee, that's not required. If you are licensed in the state of Georgia as an electrician, for example, um, I guess a hairdresser, a CPA, an attorney, then you do not have to submit the e verify number. But I can tell you that many of these firms do have one and they give it to us. There are no exceptions to that because um, we at the city um, have to file this report with the Department of Audits at the end of the year. And, and um, we'd have a hard time explaining why one particular business missed out on, on their E-Verify number. So once we have that information, we enter that into our accounting system. Our accounting system and like many others, will not let us in. Will not let us set you up as a vendor if we don't have that e-verify number or a reason why you don't have one. And so, it's rare that we are asked to set you up as a vendor when we don't have the agreement already in place of, of how much we're contracting for. The, uh, just to clarify, the rule is two thousand four hundred ninety-nine dollars. Per agreement. So, if um, if we agreed that you're going to pave a street for us for a hundred thousand dollars, then we would need an E-Verify number. But this is this is probably not the example I'm looking for. But if the next time we use you, it's only a thousand dollars, then let's reverse this. Let's say we're going to use you for a thousand dollar agreement. You're going to provide us with uh, some electrical work. We, since it's under 2,499, we would not ask you for an E-Verify number. But what if you come back later and have another job for 2,499? The answer is we will not need your E-Verify number because it's per agreement. It's not the accumulation for the year, it's per agreement. So is that confusing? Um, Many cities have a procurement certification program. We do not because we don't have a procurement department. Uh, but that, again, we're talking about it. And uh, hopefully by the middle of the year, around in January, we'll be making some decisions um, through the mayor and council. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, how, we, how do we decide who vendors are and how, how do we um, procure services. Um, if we need services for under $50,000, we do not need a sealed, sealed, sealed bid for that. Um, over, actually we don't ask for sealed bids, sealed bids unless it's over $50,000. And, but we do um, require bids. We, so, if we can get bids. Many, many projects are so specialized that we know of only one or two vendors in the whole state 
that can do that work. And so we will call upon those two or, or just the one. Um, but I, um, we, and so it becomes, it becomes our job to find, to find these vendors um, that we, we would not add, put those in the paper. Our legal organ is the Henry County Herald. Uh, we would not put anything under 100,000 on the state's website, Georgia Procurement Registry. Um, and so we would have to be searching out these vendors because we would come to the mayor and council and we would say, we've looked and here's the, the, the best price we could find for this particular agreement based on the qualifications of the vendor. Um, and so there's only one other way we would do it. And this would be for any contract, for any, for any piece of equipment or sometimes services, we can, we can piggyback on the state of Georgia's contracts. So the state of Georgia has gone through this procurement process. They've, they've chosen the best vendor for say copiers. We need to buy a copier. We can look at the state's, um, state of Georgia's marketplace, they call it. And we can see their contract with say Conoco Minolta. And we can, we can pick that contract and piggyback on the state's um, deal, if you will. And we can come to the mayor and council and say, well, we've picked this from the state contract. We know it's, it's the best contract for the state. So it should be good enough for us. Um, we, so that's an option for us as well. Um, when, when, whenever we um, have a request for a proposal where we receive sealed bids and they're open here at City Hall um, under the auspices of the city clerk, um, or whether it's not a sealed bid, we have really no way of knowing the ownership of the vendor. So one of the questions that you have, I know you have is how do we, how do we handle diversity? How do we know uh, if a business is minority owned or, or, or owned by women? And, and the answer is we don't know. We don't know unless somebody knows. Um, our requests for proposals uh, do not ask ownership information from what I understand. Um, when I receive a W-9 form from a vendor, I don't know, I may know who the president is. It may have a, a name, um, but many times, you know, it's not, it doesn't give me that information. So we don't make our decision of which vendor to go with based on who owns the business. But in setting up a procurement department, that may be something we would add to our proposals to, to get a, an idea of, um, of who owns that business. Um, and so we do not have a formal supplier diversity policy. And again, that, that could be something that we develop um, in the future. Um, having said all that, any contract over $10,000 has to be approved by our mayor and council. Um, unless it's an emergency. In an emergency situation, our city administrator can, can approve that. No, everybody knowing that it would come back to the mayor and council for review and explanation. Um, um, that is, of course, that's the exception to the rule. But we have to have the ability to move forward in an emergency. Um, let's see what else I'll add. Um, anytime that you want to see what, what contracts that we are putting out for bid, uh, a good example of that is paving our streets. Uh, those contracts are typically over a hundred thousand dollars and you can see those if you go to the georgia procurement registry all those are listed rfps and how they were uh, resolved and of course looking at the paper uh, the, the, though those things would also be add uh, requests for proposals would be in the legal organ as well 
So every year the city goes through an annual audit and every expenditure is subject to be questioned. Um, and, and so we have to be able to explain um, payments over $10,000. We have to be able to show um, sealed, sealed bids for anything over 100,000. All these things are double checked by our, or subject to being checked by our auditor. And, um, and so there's, there's that check as well where we have accountability to, to um, in our financial statements to the, to the public as well as to the governing body and to the citizens of, of McDonough and the state. And guess what? The State Department of Audits gets that audit as well. So we cannot get away from the State Department of Audits. But they're good people. I call them all the time. And, um, and ask them questions and um, so they're also very helpful. So Preston, that concludes what I've got to say. Um, I know you may have some questions down the road when we get towards the end. So, so you read Lyle is going Lyles is going to talk about Main Street and some of our other Main Street related programs. Thank you. Good morning, Eureka. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well this morning. Um, so I am actually sitting in for our Main Street manager, Cinderella Bennett. Um, and Cinderella is actually hosting a ribbon cutting for one of the new restaurants here on the square, which is Crest and Craft. So you all feel free to come down and try them out. I hear the pizza is just fantastic. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about our Main Street program. Um, Main Street programs were provided, um, provide essential community driven initiatives that focuses on the revitalization of older traditional business districts, mainly downtown areas, mainly by hosting events and activities that generates foot traffic and um, boast, boost revenue for local businesses, which in turn helps the city through sales taxes. Uh, Main Street's comprehensive strategy um, is four components, design, economic restructuring, um, promotion and organization. Also, as part of the revitalization program, Main Street is the source of facade grants. And these grants were generated to encourage property owners and businesses to improve the exterior appearance of their buildings and storefronts. Um, we currently have a facade grant application process. Um, as of now, it's a two-part process, but we're working to combine it into a one-step simpler process. Some of the requirements include a site plan, color renderings, a list of materials and samples of those materials, um, and written permission by the property owner, um, and of course your fee um, for that application. And once you have submitted the application, it usually takes between 15 to 30 business days for review and processing, but again, um, we're working to reduce the amount of time that that takes so that we can get people up and running. Um, if you have any questions about facade grants, you can contact Tina Tebow, um, who works in our community development department um, as the permit coordinator. She's located here at City Hall. Um, and of course, you can always contact Cinderella Bennett um, or Preston should you have any questions. Thank you. Eureka, can you provide those numbers, please? And are those email addresses? Yes, um, they can call City Hall. The number here is 770-957-3915. And Tina's email address is ttebo, that's T-T-E-B-O at mcdonaga.org. And Cinderella is C Bennett, C-B-E-N-N-E-T-T -T at mcdonaga.org. Thank you. Eureka, don't leave yet, please. Thank yes, you very much. 
Uh, Ariel Eureka is being very modest. She is the staff person that has been appointed to lead up the McDonough Beautiful campaign. And we started this campaign as a way in which to beautify our city and to make sure that businesses were able to be partners in this process. So I think we would be remiss if we didn't talk about McDonough Beautiful and the great work that you're doing. So please share about the pocket, the, uh, the pocket parks and the different areas that we're partnering with cities for cleaning up corridors and all the other things that are happening under McDonald Beautiful because it is economic development and it does support our small businesses. Yes, ma'am. So McDonald Beautiful is three components. It's beautification, it's litter prevention, and it's rehabilitation. And so we um, host every year, we've had an annual citywide cleanup day. Um, and that's been very successful. We have groups, we have individuals, we have families who come together and they will clean up one particular street. Um, this past year we had, um, or earlier this year, we had about 40 people who came out and cleaned up about 10 streets. Um, so it was very productive and it really helps us maintain the beauty of McDonough. Um, and we also, um, we hosted an initiative started last year where we are doing beautification projects in each of the districts. So in district one, um, council member Stewart's district, we have a festival of flowers um, and that includes flowers. It also has a, a park bench where some of the students in the mornings, you'll see them sitting out there on the park bench, on the bench waiting for the bus to come. So it's very helpful for them. Um, and they are also building a, uh, planting a community garden where they will, um, the, the community is responsible for maintaining it, um, but they can, it's an opportunity for them to come out and plant their own flowers in their garden. Um, and district two, council members of uh, Vincent's district, we are um, putting a pocket park right at the end of Alexander Park West um, near the roundabout. We're very excited about that. We hope that it will be complete, hopefully by the end of this month. We've had some delays with some vendors, um, but it's gonna have a um, bike rack. Um, we're gonna put some big games out there. Um, so that people who are coming along down the street, as well as those who are in the park can also take part, um, you know, in that area. Um, they can stop, you know, rest for a while and then get back on their bikes and ride some more. Um, and then in District 3, um, Mayor Pro Tem Elrod's district, we are, um, we are going to put a mural up. Um, it's going to be a private public partnership uh, with one of the property owners here in the city. Um, and it's going to be a mural of the old fire station. Um, and I'm told that that was located at the um, sign craft, the old sign, the sign craft building was our original fire station here in McDonough. So we've, um, we have a couple of mural, muralists that have submitted some sketches. So we're going to take a look at those and make a decision in the next couple of weeks. So you'll be hearing and seeing more about that. Um, and then in district four, we're looking uh, with the uh, Council Member Varner's district, we are looking at some crosswalk art. So we're looking at some areas over in the South Point area where we can put up some crosswalk art. Um, and then we, um, for our rehabilitation uh, component, we had looked at having some um, homeowner assistance programs. So we're still looking and working uh, with Habitat for Humanity. Um, we didn't get to it this year, but we hope beginning of next year, um, hopefully after COVID has settled down, then we can get some more of those seminars and webinars and programs established so that we can help not just our residents, but also our business owners improve um, the look and feel of their homes and businesses. Thank you, Euretha. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Vincent, for making Euretha talk a little bit more. She was sitting over here like, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk. But Euretha does a great job for the city. And in Ariel, as you can see, we're a small city, but we're very hands-on. Uh, we open up the doors. We want anybody to come and move or open up a business here in the city of McDonough. Um, I get calls every day from, you know, trash not being picked up or a light out in the subdivision. And I particularly go out and look at these incidents. So you can call City Hall and 
uh, get in contact with the mayor or, or any council member uh, or any of the staff. We have a very competent staff here and they do a great job for the city. Uh, so we, we invite you to come and, and be part of the city of McDonald. It's easy to, to open up a business here. We walk you through the process. Uh, we, we try to just make it an easy process because we want you to come back and do business in the city of McDonald's. Awesome, thank you. And thank you to, to the city of McDonough. Um, I know there were a couple questions. Um, you mentioned that business licenses are free. What about nonprofits? Are those licenses free as well? For nonprofits? Uh, my understanding on um, 501c3 and six, all those not-for-profits um yeah. they do have to to file an application with us but there i believe mm -hmm. the tax is zero and i'm verified by okay. hand. Uh, an admin fee while you're looking that up um i i do have another question about the business licenses they want to know if you do business in both stockbridge and mcdonough do you need two licenses so um, I think that's a good question. <laughs> like, for example, if you have a space in Stockbridge, if you have a space in McDonough, um, do they both require licenses? Well, is it, I'm going to say, I'm going to answer it two different ways. One is the answer is yes, they need to have a, a license here in McDonough, an occupancy tax yeah. permit, based on the revenues from the anticipated revenues from McDonough. Mm -hmm. um, but we we frequently get a question uh, of a contractor coming from another state, say from Alabama, to do work in the city of McDonough. Do they have to have an occupational tax permit here? And the answer is they do not. If they can prov provide us with their occupational tax permit from Alabama, right? That that and tell us that it, it would include the um, the contract amount or the revenues that they would be earning in McDonough. So they have to be able to show that, um, that they do have a, an occupational tax permit in the other state. Um, but they, if they have a location here in McDonough, a building or a physical nexus here, then they would have to have an occupational tax permit on their wall if our building inspectors or code enforcement code compliance officers were to come by. Okay. And do you guys um, already have a vendor list? Um, and how often is that list updated? Well, our vendor list is basically the vendors in our accounting system. So mm -hmm. we can, um, we can look to see, and I'm glad you asked that question, because many times we will, we will look to um, the vendors that we have used in the past for certain, certain projects or expenditures as a way to locate them and to call them. Um, also, um, if, if we accept bids for a particular project uh, and the bids are close, but one of the, the bidders is located in the city of McDonough, we will lean towards that, that city of McDonough business if we can. Because of local preference? Because of local preference. Okay. Assuming that the qualifications are, are there and assuming, um, you know, that they're not substantially higher or lower than, than the uh, other bids. And does that local preference extend to all the rest of the cities in Henry County or just to McDonough? Well, the, the one I was referring to was just the city of McDonough. Mm -hmm. but Henry County would be a, a good second um, criteria as well, but we, we generally don't look at it that way. Okay. Um, there's a question for, for you. I'm not really part of the decision making on, on a lot of, see we're decentralized. So I don't, I don't get involved um, in these big project bids. So I can't really tell you if there's a preference for the county, but I, but I have heard the city of McDonough preference. Okay. Okay. Um, does the city of McDonough utilize pre-vetted pricing consortiums that issue RFP, RFQ awards like U.S. Communities and National IPA to save resources, time, and money? We do not. Um, the resource that we would look at uh, besides just our, 
our own bid process would be the state of Georgia marketplace. And, uh, and whether they use those outside sources, uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, and I know it's a lot, a lot of questions coming <laughs> and your area is probably going to be a little bit more. So if two businesses share the same space, do you need two separate certificates of occupancy? I would probably say yes, but, um, certificate, that's a good question. Um, I would think they're the two answer, separate yes, businesses, but in the same building. Correct. Same space, same suite, possibly. I'm going to say yes, but I, I can double check that. Okay. Um, and they asked for the contact information. Thank you, Councilwoman Vincent, for putting that information in there. Um, so as you guys start to develop your um, procurement, um, or, or so it has to go through City Hall um, or the mayor and council, I should say, um, you know, we definitely would um, like to be a part of that conversation um, to make sure that we are... Um, you know, we're because there are there are ways to do things where you're not recreating the wheel, but you're making sure um, that things are um, definitely um, inclusive. Um, and you guys are really big with film. Um, I, I didn't hear that today, but I mean, I have seen the city of McDonough on Netflix <laughs> a okay. lot. <laughs> So what type of um, things are in place for shooting? Because you guys get a lot of movies there. Um, so I don't yeah, know I who to cover the that. Matter. But um, the film industry is pretty big in Georgia. And I know City of McDonough, you guys get a lot of movies. Um, yes, ma'am, we do. Um, and, the, and we do issue film permits, media permits for that purpose. Um, and so that would that would go through our community development department. And, um, and, and in some cases, the mayor and council will approve, um, especially if city bit, uh, buildings are being utilized. Okay. Uh, that would go before the mayor and council. So are there incentives to doing um, film in that area? Just because you guys get so many, I figured it had to be. I, I don't know of an incentive that we provide. Um, okay. the, the permit is not very costly um i haven't said that i can't tell you how much it is but i think it's under five thousand dollars um and it just depends on how much city space is going to be tied up and how much how much um you know if there's if there needs to be a, a police officer present presence um there for some reason those kinds of things public works uh, would be considered as well but Mike, if I could add to what you're saying, and you're doing an amazing job, by the way. Uh, we are proud of our history in, in McDonough with being friendly towards the movie industry. And that was our incentive. Uh, we, we participated, as you've said, in a lot of movies, including working with Tyler Perry on A Medea's Christmas. We've had a lot of stars that have come through to film on our square. And we have in fact been registered with the state of Georgia film and tourism as being a preferred location. So I think um, one of the reasons why we, we have become so popular and we've had to implement some, some policies which we did not have before, but it was um, for the purpose of, of being more consistent in how, how we do things. I was contacted by a couple of different groups. And what I always heard from the industry was, I'm reaching out to you because I heard that you worked with so-and-so. So it's that word of mouth, you know, and that's why it's always good to show forth that Southern hospitality, that McDonough heart that we are known for, and the, it sticks, you know. So when the folks in Hollywood are looking for a place to come, in Atlanta and they are not willing to deal with the Atlanta traffic or the Atlanta, Atlanta cost, then McDonough, and I understand Stockbridge as well because Stockbridge participated in the, um, in the uh, movie. Black Panther. Uh, <laughs> Black Panther. I was trying to say Wakanda forever, but that's not the name of the movie, but Black, Black Panther. So 
we're happy. We're happy about, you know, the, uh, the things that we can, the feathers that we can put in our hat. In fact, tourism at one point had actually started putting up displays to mark McDonough's history for, for film. And we've had a lot of local films that have been uh, produced here as well. Bass Brothers Productions has filmed at least two or three uh, movies here. And I know that they're working on another movie now. So yeah, we, we kind of serve as a little incubator for movies. So thank you so much for asking that question. And thank you, Mike, for uh, responding on the technical side. I just want to brag. <laughs> I, I would like to expound, if I may, on uh something that you brought up, Councilwoman Vincent, and that was our loan program for businesses um, at the start of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, I guess. Uh, the mayor and council got together really quick and uh, incubated this idea that to help em our employers maintain their employees and or their independent contractors if they had contractors. Um, just to help them out for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks by making um, a loan available to them up to $3,000 per business. And we made the application process very simple and very quick. And, and the way this was done without getting in too much technical detail is, is we basically approved a grant of $150,000 to the development authority of McDonough. And then the, the development authority has a little more flexibility than the city and they were able to make these loans to these businesses. And uh, the way it worked is we, 60% of the loans were allocated towards the, the main street businesses, or I should say the, the businesses located in the development authorities district. And then 40% were available outside the development authority district. So we tried to um, reach all businesses in McDonough some way or another. And, and even though, um, and it turned out to be a great success, we did not loan the whole $150,000, or I say the development authority did not. They're still looking at some possibilities there with, with a little bit left over. But um, in talking to our city attorney during this time, because it had to, just about everything we do like this has to be blessed by the city attorney. The city attorney said he had never heard of any other city doing something like this. And he was pretty amazed with the idea and the, and the world. It looks like you went out a little bit. Um, I definitely want to piggyback on that. Um, you know, um, I definitely applaud the city of McDonough for coming out first in Henry County to offer um, any type of relief for their small businesses. Um, you definitely were the first. Um, I know Henry County has come out. Um, their, their, their questions are, were a little bit more stringent and um, we're still waiting on the city of Stockbridge. So, <clears throat> but I know it was approved. So I definitely want to applaud um, the city of McDonough for doing what they needed to do to make sure um, small businesses were taken care of. Um, it looks like we might have lost them, <laughs> but um, we can give them a couple more minutes to get back on. But I definitely want to um, thank um, Councilwoman Vincent for partnering with Southern Crescent Women in Business and how to do business with the city of McDonough. Um, I am definitely interested to see what possible opportunities exist um, as it relates to um, helping to develop their procurement um, department <laughs> and supplier diversity policies and um, even a local preference policy um, that extends outside of just McDonough. It may be Henry County, maybe reaching um, those counties that, uh, what you call with those MSAs, um, making sure that they um, are considered as well. Um, and women own, <laughs> women own DBE, um, all of the um, certifications that um, our small businesses and um, 
suppliers are getting to make sure that they are doing everything they need to do. So I guess the follow-up would be making sure you're e-verified, which is really, really a simple process, making sure um, that you are staying in contact with the city to see what opportunities are out there. Anything over a hundred thousand, they're pushing out to the legal instruments into the state website. Um, anything under, um, you may just need to be um, connected in, in, in the know to see what opportunities. I think it was important that if they tell, if they're telling you what type of um, where they're going with the um, city and what their goals are, even with developing out the, the park, Alexander Park, um, you, you hone in on those <laughs> because those are where the opportunities will lie. Um, Councilwoman Vincent, did you have anything further? Yeah, Ariel, I, again, I can't, I can't thank you enough because community engagement is so very, very important. And I applaud your organization as well for your willingness to work on the development of policy because I personally believe that you need to have some level of expertise and uh, a position of, of knowledge that comes from end users. So I think that's what your organization can bring to us. You know, what are the current challenges? What are the things that you recommend that we have as a part of our, our policy? All of that is, is needed. I know as a smaller city, because our population is around 27,000 and we've rapidly grown, uh, there are a lot of things that your larger cities have in place that we don't have in place, but we're working towards that end. So your expertise would definitely help us in, in shaping those policies. One of the things that I like to see the city do is to take more advantage of those federal programs and federal platforms that are available for cities. So of course we were a part of the CARES Act and there are other funding sources that would be available to us. I'd like to see us apply for more grants. And in doing that, what that actually does for organizations like yours and for other small businesses, especially women owned businesses, is that it, it, it mandates that we do have section three provisions within our guidelines. We do have uh, those provisions that would uh, give points to minority owned businesses, to women owned businesses. I think that um, moving forward, that this is going to be extremely important, especially because we are part of a region and we're not just a, a compartmental live city on the south side. I hope that we always maintain that small town feel and heart, but we have to understand that we are a growing community. We have a number of home-based businesses. So I, I really want to expand upon how we can help home-based businesses as well. A lot of us, a lot of people in particular, outside of having small businesses that are located in a physical space, they are those small businesses that are located in homes. And so I'd like to uh, talk with you, talk with other groups about how we can provide more information on, on business development. Uh, I've sent a lot of people to the Small Business Development Council over at Clayton County but I, I think sometimes it helps to establish these think tanks where thought leaders can really come forward with what the challenges are, and then we can develop solutions around what those challenges are. Um, I, I have to, and I've mentioned him earlier, but uh, applaud uh, Commissioner Holmes in being a forward thinker as it relates to small businesses and small business development. So I know that he continues to be on the front line of that. Um, I salute our, our Henry County Chamber of Commerce as well for the work that they do. But again, there are always those things that slip through the crack that I think we can address if we're really on the ground floor, the front line of talking with the individual business owners them, themselves. I'll also mention, if, if I may, that... Um, we were talking as a mayor and council about establishing a solar farm in 
in the city of McDonough. And I know that our city administrator mentioned that as well. Uh, that is a huge opportunity for McDonough. It is a huge opportunity to create a mechanism for, for employment and job credit and employing small businesses as a part of that process. And the, the end game was to, to establish a mechanism that would actually create a scenario where McDonough had its own utility, its own electrical utility. So that's a pretty large uh, dream for us. I don't know where all the mayor and council is, but I do know when our prior uh, city administrator was here, there was a great deal of energy around establishing that, that solar farm. And uh, I think we're, we're right for that. I, um, I'm hoping that that's something that doesn't die on the vine because we can actually pay back into the electrical grid. And when we start producing energy that goes in that grid, then what that does is it saves the end user money. So uh, all of these things are- I, I, I'll tell you this, lead, lead with how, how it's saving money. <laughs> and you'll be all right. <laughs> but that's amazing. I think that's a really good goal. Um, and I'll say this, maybe look at putting together um, something with the film industry, whether it's a, it's a co-op, whether it's a, um, you know, I have to look, I mean, you know, we have a chapter out in Fayette County. I know their industry is really big out there. Um, but I have to take a look to see, you know, that's not my area. Um, my, my vice president, Chris Scott, that's her area. She's filmed, but I know we, there's a lot that happens with film. So it would definitely be, um, something that I definitely think you guys should look at. Um, because, you know, you, you guys are doing a lot there. You could probably do way more <laughs> yeah. and, and, and just I'll, even I'll... developing that because there are a lot of creatives in Henry County yeah. and just being able to pull these creatives together is really important because um, everybody doesn't want to have to go to Atlanta and everybody doesn't right. necessarily want to go to Fayette County from Henry County. Um, so, um, I'm going to put my uh, personal email in the chat as well. I'm, I'm doing this as opposed to the city email because this isn't really a, a city initiative yet. But if there are ideas, people who would like to work with me uh, with, with uh, creating this type of system, I know we were really talking a lot about engaging young people. And this, this was this was when we were having the small business boot camps, but there are a lot of young people in Henry County in particular that have home-based studios. You know, they're, they're doing a lot of things, a lot of filming, independent filming. We really saw a lot of this when Yogati came to our community and he was filming um, its law. So during that time- I didn't even were, know about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That caused quite a stir. That's another story. But uh, yes, uh, its law was filmed in our in the Henry County Courthouse. They went through their own, own process for obtaining that space. And I think it happened during a time when folks were sensitive to, which we're still sensitive to the whole issue of law enforcement, but its law had nothing to do with uh, police officers, but it had, everything to do with the code of how you treat your friends and family, et cetera. So it was just exciting for me to see how many young people came forward to participate in that video and to express interest in the arts. The arts are, are, are huge for me. And so any expansion that we can do with making McDonough right for uh, folks who are interested in the arts, whatever the genre is, then I'm definitely on, on board. So yeah, let's keep the conversation going and, and follow up and see where it takes us. Absolutely. <laughs> well, um, I, I don't see any more questions. If there are no more questions, um, I think we will conclude. It is 1122, we, we came in right under time. I want to make sure that again, um, everyone um, make sure you have your e-verification if you're wanting to do business. 
with um, the city of McDonough, making sure you're connected. Um, the information has been put inside the chat as far as who to contact. Councilwoman Vincent is open to partnering, which is an excellent thing <laughs> because partnerships matter. The public-private partnerships are extremely important. So again, thank you, Councilwoman Vincent. Thank you to the city of McDonough. Thank you, Preston. <laughs> and thank you to the finance director and Miss Euretha. I appreciate you all. And Southern Crescent Women in Business is here to assist women-owned businesses and small businesses in the Southern Crescent. Again, I am Arielle Shaw, and thank you and have an amazing day.